I'm Arya Schwartz, and welcome to the Windsider Show, where it's all about the W. Shy Town, stand up. Talk about an interesting team full of storylines. Excited to dive into the Chicago sky with Blake Silverman. Welcome back to the show. Blake, hyped to talk Sky with you. To lay the scene for everybody, James Wade leaves mid-year last year, essentially. I don't know if mid is the right term, but in the season, just two years removed from a championship season, this team has just two players remaining from that finals win, um, but those two players are expected to take on extremely different roles in Dana Evans and Diamond to Shields. Uh, I mean... Talk about an interesting team that I'm excited to talk with you about. Uh, Blake, how's it going? Um, do you find Chicago interesting? Good. Thank you for having me on again. I find Chicago really interesting. I mean, for different reasons than some other teams. They are finally all in on the rebuild, which I think it was time. Uh, the trade of Kalia Copper to Phoenix, I feel like, was a tough pill to swallow um, because last season they were the one team who like you could have questioned whether they should be competing or not but they were clearly they should have been because they james wade traded their draft assets and now um with james wade gone new head coach new gm they trade Ka to recuperate some of those assets bring in and some exciting young players that make this team look totally different and they're finally all in on that so i'm excited to see how it goes this season for chicago yeah i mean you kind of just did the uh the brief recap that i was going to ask you to do so way to jump the gun on that one. <laughs> no uh it, they're they're a very interesting team and they're a fun team to talk about because look i'll be blunt i think they're a lottery team um you look at who they lost last year. Last year, you know, I just want to talk about it a little bit. I think overall, successful season, given the situation, they kept fighting, they kept playing hard. That playoff push was immaculate. Um, and honestly, if I'm looking back now, I'm sad we didn't appreciate just the offensive fun of Mabry and Ka. Like, that was... And I was getting real excited. I was talking to some people, you know, my crazy offseason take was uh, Diamond or uh, NECA and uh, Skylar Diggins Smith going to Chicago just for the fun of it. I mean, imagine, and, and this is how crazy things can happen, how quickly the snowball effect takes place. You lose Ka, you're no longer, I mean, obviously, you know, from the likes of it, it was they didn't get NECA, they didn't get Skylar, so Ka was like, peace. But to look at it from that aspect of, you know, there was a world, the multiverse of, you know, NECA and Skylar joining Ka and Marina would have been so much fun. I was talking about it real, real in depthly with people uh, during the offseason as a what if. And that is possibly, if not the most fun. They might not have been a contender. And that's probably why, you know, those two players chose to go to a different team. But that would have been so fun. Um, obviously, the big thing looming over this team is the lack of facilities. This the team, it's hard. I mean, you saw the despairing uh, video of Angel Reese going to her first press conference. There was nobody there. It was in a rec center gym. Um, it was awkward. It was weird. And so I think, like, for me, this team, you have to build them through the draft because they don't have an option of of attracting free agents right now. That's not a possibility. Um, so I guess that's my recap is they going into this season, they knew they had to make all in on free agency. They failed that. So then they had to ship out some assets, keep one uh, and try and move forward with that. I want to remind everyone to make sure to check out our show notes uh, for our sponsors slash affiliate links. We just started working with some online betting, betting sports books. So definitely check that out. And if you have a gambling problem, please get help. Use the phone number in the show notes. All right. So let, let, we've been doing this, you know, uh, who did I have you on for before? Connecticut? We, yeah, we talked Connecticut. We talked Connecticut. So you know the run of things. They go, now we're going to talk who they lost in free agency. So we've been talking about that. Uh, Courtney Williams, Ka, obviously, is the big name. Probably should have let off with her. 
uh, Alana Smith, and not to be underrated, the young budding guard, Sika Kone. Um, in free agency, they added back Diamond Shields, Bree Turner, Lindsay Allen, Michaela Onyenwere, uh, Kennedy Carter, and Kaiser Gondrzic also signed uh, training camp contracts. Obviously, we're recording this while training camp is going on, so it's very well and, and possible that they are going to you know have to cut some of these players. So bear with us as we talk about this. We're not going to get into the finer details of who's getting cut, who's not. I mean, there's some players we expect to be there. Izzy Harrison, unless traded. Uh, Bree Turner, unless traded. E. Will, unless traded. I was talking, shout out to Matt Cohen, we were chatting about this a little bit, how Izzy, Bree, or E. Will could be trade bait for a team that thinks all they need is that one extra big depth to get them over the, the hump. Um, a team that I'm looking at possibly maybe Seattle, but I don't think they have the assets for it or necessarily the cap space. But just think about that. Um, when you look at this roster, kind of, how do you, th- like, before, let's not even talk draft yet. Like, where do you think their free agency put them in comparison to where they were last year? Do they think, do you think they got better in free agency? Do you think they kind of were stagnant? Do you think they were finally accepting the inevitable? It, it's tough because I I think what they did in the draft helps address some of the needs that they had where I look at the team, like where they were last year, they weren't a good rebounding team. And they had Courtney Williams, who is a really good rebounding guard. Um, and then, I mean, they bring in Bree Turner. They're going to have Izzy Harrison. So And on top of what they did in the draft, I know we'll get to that, but bringing in Camilo Cardoso and Angel Reese, who are both good rebounders, they addressed that. But the other area is three-point shooting. Uh, They were a good three-point shooting team last year, mainly because of Mabry, Ka, as well as Courtney Williams. So you don't have Ka, you don't have Courtney Williams. Where is that like coming back from? I mean... You have Lindsay Allen. Is Dana Evans going to take that next step? So I think they got better in terms of like ending possessions, addressing that rebounding need. Um, but, and also, I didn't even bring up Alana Smith, who uh, you mentioned that isn't with the team anymore. Another question, uh, or like the bigger question from their transactions is the shooting for me, which. I mean, they still have Mabry, who's a lights out shooter. Uh, We'll talk about Brenna Maxwell, who they added in the draft, but I'm not sure if they're going to be as good or a better shooting team than they were last year. Yeah, it's not, they're not going to be as fun offensively, basically. Yeah. Um, No, I mean, when I look at Chicago, I feel like almost there was an obvious leak in the boat, and then they went to plug that, and then a different leak appeared. Um, And obviously, It's the shooting, it's the rebounding. They went into it focused on defense, but when you lose the the pizzazz, the kapow, or as uh, Lightning McQueen would say in my child's favorite movie, (laughs) kachow. Uh, If you lose the kachow, um, you're really struggling. But I think, to an extent, I like what they're doing in this because I think if you're going to be a bottom-dwelling team, if you're a team that ceiling is, you know, scraping into the playoffs you go the connecticut sun route you want to just have stifling intense defense control the paint they have size obviously we'll get into the draft picks they added some uh some more not necessarily size well some size some rebounding um but so i think they're basically saying okay if our offense is going to slack if our offense is going to slow down a little bit let's just put our chips in on defense now look Kennedy Carter is an electric offensive player if she can make this roster. Um, And I, and I don't want us to like gloss over. Can Kennedy Carter, you know, find her footing in this league. We've seen her play overseas and when she's been able to stay on a team, she's been an electric offensive player. Um, This is a team that maybe she can find a spot on. Maybe she can last the whole season and maybe uh, she can, you know, get some footing for the rest of her career. She's an offensive player that I think can definitely help this team, but she doesn't necessarily have the size. Neither does Dana Evans. Um, So to me, there's some interest, some intrigue 
just in regards of like, okay, if you're going to go on the, we're hanging our hat on defensive route, we're going to be t- hard nosed, defensive, you know, physical, cool, but you, they lack guard size. That That's just what I'm looking at is they lack guard size. So, you know, when I think about this team, I go, okay, like I said, their ceiling in my mind is, you know, scraping for an eighth seed. Do you, do you disagree with that? Do you think this team can make it out of the lottery this year? I don't think so. I have them pegged for a lottery team. I just don't. And it's not really them. Like you mentioned, I see what they're doing. I mean, a good way when you are in a rebuild to, I guess, just compete is being a good defensive team. There are questions offensively. Like you said, I just feel like the talent level with this team isn't uh, the same as a lot of other teams in this league, which I mean, how could it be when you're pretty much doing almost a full tear down rebuild? And like you said, you're not attracting free agents that are coming in. You have to give up some of your in-house assets to do that. So I just think those circumstances have them pretty firmly in the lottery for me this year. And honestly, I feel like that might be the best thing for the franchise moving forward because they, they have their first round pick next year. But other than that, like the cupboard of draft picks is fairly slim. Well, they have their first round pick, but I believe it's a swap. So it's like, they're going to get a first round pick next year, but will it be a lottery? Probably not because whatever, we can get into that. I I, I don't want to like too much go down the road, but I completely agree with you. And so no, certain teams, it's like very much, it's more been as, look, players don't tank, coaches don't tank. Yep. Upper, upper management tanks because they see a long-term plan because their goal, yes, it's to win it every year. Some years it's not possible. Some years you need to think, you know, look, Washington is openly saying they're punting for a few years. So run me down who uh, Chicago drafted, and then we can kind of talk about this. Because while me personally have been uh, a little bit critical of Camilla and Angel, I think they were drafted to the right place for their own personal success. Yeah, agreed. Uh, just to go over the draft picks, Camilla Cardoso, South Carolina, number three overall. Angel Reese gets drafted number seven. Chicago made that. I believe it was the day before the draft trade with Minnesota to swap seven for eight. So they they went, they wanted Angel Reese. They moved up to a spot to make sure they can get her. And also they bring in, which was one of the surprises of the draft to me, but it makes sense. They draft Rinna Maxwell out of Gonzaga, number 13. Great three-point shooter. She shot 44% last year, 48% the year before. So I forget who was saying it in the post-draft availabilities, but Chicago thinks that they got the best shooter in the country. And like Brenna Maxwell is certainly up there. And one of the big takeaways I have from the offseason, I guess, opposed to all the other moves and trading Ka is... I think all these rookies are going to make this team because Maxwell, like they brought her in for a reason. They need additional shooting on top of Mabry. And that's what she provides. And they have the cap space for it. And and that's the other thing is like so many of these teams like to push back a little bit. A lot of these teams are drafting needs in camp. They see, okay, this is how they compare to other players in the league, how they stack up are they going to provide us what we need and do we have the cap space for them uh, or the roster spot? And I completely agree. I think all three make this team. uh, You have an avail. All right. Side note. I have to say it. I said it on the links one and I'll say it on the sky one. The sky got played in that trade. There was no way that Cheryl Reeve was taking Angel Reese. (laughs) So there is absolutely no reason. So Chicago essentially traded. Sika Kone and a draft swap, and maybe even a pick. I forget if there was like a second or third round. I don't really care about that. Uh, For Angel Reese, a player that they were going to get anyways. So I I think I'm very critical of the Minnesota Lynx and their front office when it comes to certain roster moves they've made. Uh, I got to think that they pulled a, a savvy vet move on Chicago because also 
Like, if you just think about it from a realistic perspective, if you were so worried about Minnesota, you only moved up one spot, you wanted Minnesota to swap it with you. Do you really think they took Sika and they're like, all right, now we don't, that fills our need for Angel Reese? Like, they don't fit a similar. Sorry, you can totally tell me why you think it was a good trade, whatever. I just like, I'm like, you're wasting assets right now. And for Chicago, you should be accruing as many assets as possible. That's just my take. Yeah, I mean, I the way I think about it is it it just seems like, and I think there's been some reporting, I believe it was Annie Costable with the Chicago Sun-Times that Chicago believed Angel Reese wasn't going to be there. Like they saw the draft shaking out a certain way. So they made certain that they moved up to get her. I'm not sure if Minnesota would have taken her just because they knew there was interest and made a trade after the fact. But it it was, it was definitely like an eye opening trade when it happened. But after it seems like Chicago knew who they wanted and they figured that, or I don't know if there was smoke behind the scenes, whatever the Intel was that she wasn't going to be there. So they made sure she was. It's definitely like a puzzling one that we can look back to, but that for a team like Chicago, who is like Cardoso and Reese are framed as their young core. If they really see Angel Reese as part of that young core, they made sure they went and got her, which I guess I can understand and we'll see how it works out in the long run. Yeah, I guess from Chicago's perspective, it just matters that they got the player they want. And they were willing, excuse me, they were willing to pay that price. And they would have had to pay, at worst case scenario, Minnesota does take her and then demands a trade to get Peely and something else. And they demand a bigger return. So I get that from that aspect. I just think you played your cards out of fear. You got hot feet. The moment was coming uh, and, and you sprinted. So, So for me, all right, love this draft. For Chicago, I like what they did. I think one, you're adding that. Your that was my Minnesota accent coming in hard there. <laughs> you're adding in two bigs that whether or not like they hate me, love me, whatever. There's question marks of how much success they're going to have in the W. Every college player coming to the W has that. These players, there's specific aspects. Um, sitting here, I go, okay, well, it's good for them because they're going to get minutes. Um, also, it's good for them because they have vets in front of them that they can learn from. Vets who have been around the league for a while in E. Will and Izzy Harrison uh, and Bree Turner. They're going to be able to learn from these players while also getting valuable minutes. And they're both in a situation where they don't need to be instant success. I see Cardoso can rely on her size and could arguably be somebody who's similar to a Kalani Brown or a Tierra McCowan that it took, like, you use that size in the right way you can be extremely beneficial if you don't use it in the right way uh it can really start to struggle your team um and it might take some years for you to grow into finding how to work that niche uh perfectly angel reese is a player that i have a lot more questions for like i I feel like we know cardoso we angel reese is the question can she start actually shooting uh you know can she get put those stats up when it's not you know missing bunnies and fluffing her own stats when it's not her being a foot taller than the defender like 100 pounds you know what i mean like when there's going to be a huge learning curve for angel reese and i think to be on this team is going to be beneficial my only concern is we keep talking about the lack of shooting how that's going to impact the growth uh of these players so i guess my question for you is are you more in the camp trial by fire or are you in the camp of like ease them in from the shallow end to the deep end? I I think I from those two, I would say more trial by fire, because I think at any level, like when you're adjusting to that next step, how you stay on the floor is defense and they're both going to be able to provide that. Yes, they're playing against better players, have to adjust to the next level and the pace and everything like that. But I just like the idea of focusing on the defensive end and hopefully addressing everything else as time comes along, whether it's this season, next season, whatever it may be. I think it was pretty 
clear that Cardoso was their pick at three. And after that shakes out, like there's not real, there wasn't really a top notch shooter that they could have taken instead of Angel Reese. So what Reese brings, I think outweighs um, anyone else they could have brought in. And then they go and get who is, who they're saying is they believe is the best shooter in the country in Brennan Maxwell at number 13. So I think that's like low key, a pretty sneaky ad. If she can do what she does, what she did in college for the sky makes the team finds minutes. I think that's immediate help. And then look at what it is uh, or who can help in the long term later on. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see kind of like how the minutes shake out. I'm yes. Very, very curious of that. Um, all right. So I, f- I think we both agree. We like what they did in the draft. They, they, they spoke to their needs. They spoke to their weaknesses and they weren't trying to hit a home run in the sense of, they weren't trying to like solve every problem and become a, con- a contender in one, in one draft, one off season, because that wasn't possible for them. They're on a different chart and i would also argue that you know we were talking about what we see for this team i would say that like the condensing of talent to different teams in this league is going to make it harder because while certain teams like a seattle like a vegas a new york a phoenix have condensed talent then you have teams like uh atlanta or uh, Dallas, who have accrued talent over the years, and that talent has grown, and you add little pieces. And then you have teams like Minnesota who are getting not the top, top notch of free agents, but that second tier because they have uh, an Afisa Collier, a superstar that players want to be around. So for a team like Chicago, who doesn't necessarily have a championship cornerstone player, an MVP caliber player, it's really hard to attract players. And we're not even talking about the off-court stuff. We're just talking about like the talent on the roster. So growth of Cardoso and Reese and Maxwell can really draw for the future years um, and accepting that. I mean, it's like, look, there's DC is this team that's in a similar position, um, has has somehow found their way into getting some super talents uh, over the years that are still on the team, but not necessarily having that MVP candidate yet. Um, and when you don't have that, it's hard. I guess, what are your hopes and dreams for this Chicago Sky team? Uh, it, it feels like, I don't know if it's it's cheating or not the right thing to say, but I really hope they figure out this facilities thing ASAP because I think that's what's really holding, holding them back. I, I think everything that's happened basketball-wise this offseason, after James Wade left, after they had a year of, roller coaster up ups and downs coaching changes injuries everything i we think should, they, they, side note you should mention tell me a little something about uh spoon when you get a chance sorry yeah we that's what, didn't even talk about that. that's what i was just going to mention like you make two good hires in bringing in teresa witherspoon and their new gm jeff pagliocha jeff if you're listening i'm sorry i hope i pronounce your name right but um, jeff. it so he was like Everything I've seen and heard of both of them is just that things are going well. These are the right hires, the right people to bring this franchise forward. Um, And they made those hires like while Ka was still in-house. Things changed. Now they can both fully focus on player development. One thing I was going to mention when we were talking about the draft picks is uh, Spoon played for Kim Mulkey in college, which is one thing that Angel Reese mentioned in her introductory press conference. Like she's talked to Spoon in the past. She kind of thought that she would end up in Chicago. So there is that little tie in there. And it, it just seems like the right spot for development for all their young players that they're bringing in. And hopefully they can bring some additional talent in to maximize that like we've been mentioning, ideally just opening things up on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, this is a team that uh shout out to uh Sky Show Shy. Like they're gonna they're gonna need some some social media friends. They're gonna need their fans to really step up this year. 
and support them because there's going to be downtimes. Look, I like because my other thing about these picks that I like that they did was whether or not your team's going to produce wins, it's going to be entertaining and you're going to have one of the biggest names in the draft on your team that's going to put fans in the seats, which is an important aspect. So like the equation is at the end, we're not going to be doing that good, you know, record wise. We still need to make money. We need to look forward and get better and grow. So I think they made the moves that work for marketability, growth as a team, you know, business wise, and also in a, in a personal aspect. Um, what's your expectation for this team? That was your your hope and dream. I mean, I guess uh, like we we I said that I see them firmly in the lottery. So I'd say the ceiling that I'm thinking toward right now is maybe fighting toward that the back end of the playoffs, if they can be somewhere in there, I don't really think just where the team is that the playoffs are, I mean, they're a goal, but I don't know if it's a realistic goal and just, just moving things forward. It's the first year with a new coach, a new GM, a new direction, a new young core. So a lot of change. So I think just finding some sort of consistency and progress with that will be um, ideal to me. Like you said, you bring in one of the biggest names in the draft. So that brings along some attention with it. So there will still be excitement, even though you are in pretty much a rebuild and they are in a position to compete. They made the playoffs last year. Like you mentioned, they have that pick swap. So we don't know where their pick next year will end up. So and the players, the coaches, obviously, are not going to be trying to lose. So I hope to see them fighting for a playoff spot. I don't know if they'll get there, but um, that would be fun. Yeah, I, I hate that I'm going to say this because I'm sure, you know, shout out to, in my opinion, the best social media team in the league. Oh, yes. Sky. <laughs> yeah, I don't see a way they make the playoffs. And it's not even necessarily a knock to them. I just think these other rosters are more talented um, and aren't trying new things. Now, that said, there's been times in history, you know, where new coaches have taken over rosters that didn't expect to be that good. And they've somehow, you know, cruised into, I always think about Nikki Collin and the Atlanta Dream that when she took over, second place team going into the playoffs next year, not in the playoffs. So like crazier things have happened. Um, I think no one wants to wish or hope for injuries uh, or, you know, people having horrible seasons or drop offs. But I think that's what would kind of have to happen uh, for this team to make the playoffs, in my humble, humble opinion. Uh, as always, appreciate chatting with you about this. It would be fun to kind of discuss it more and see what happens. I'm curious how Michaela Onyewere fits into this team. I know we didn't talk mm-hmm. about her much. I think it's more so because when you look at this roster, you know where things kind of lean. Um, I am curious how she's going to pair with a Marina uh, with some of these other guards on this roster, because you know the front court on this team is is pretty much set. Um, they're pretty packed, so I'm curious where you know the guard, the positions of guards fit, like falls out as training camp continues uh, for this team. As you know, I'd like to finish every episode with a fun little question of Blake: Who's your goat? Swin Cash. Ooh, okay, okay. 